Good morning. I've been patiently waiting for the sun to come up so that it's not too dark and you can see me. But I feel like it took forever this morning. I think it's just because it's a bit overcast, a bit cloudy. Took a little while. Okay. Let's grab some food for Maggie so that she wants to come into the head bale. I don't know why I'm whispering. I feel like it's just too early to speak loudly yet. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking chili dog. My Australian Kelpie. I want to do a, a sort of an update on how she's going. So before we bring Maggie up for milking, let's uh, get her out. So uh, I was given chili from a friend who had too many dogs at the time uh, and she has just been the best dog. I'm so, so impressed um, from this breed. They're just very self-disciplined, uh, very hardworking, very... Loyal. So this is Chili's pen where she sleeps. Uh, that's important. <laughs> that's important because uh, it's sort of an off switch. She's always going. She's very energetic. She always wants to be working animals, working livestock. Uh, so for a normal household dog, for a normal household dog, that probably seems a bit strange to have her in a pen, but normally livestock dogs are either in a pen or on a chain. We tried having Tilly on a train on a chain uh, when we first got her, and that's what she had sort of known um, when she had come to us from the previous owner. But she kept getting off and uh, chasing the chickens and. I w I'd be at work and she would get off the chain somehow and start chasing things. So I just wanted a really secure pen where I could keep her that I knew she was not going to get out, not get tangled up. Uh, I tried to put it in a spot. It's sort of tucked away behind a hedge where she's not overstimulated. Uh, so she doesn't bark too much. She will bark when the cows or horses come up the lane here. Uh, but she's pretty good uh, compared to some some livestock dogs that I've seen. She she keeps barking to a minimum. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go through today and share with you guys our uh, where we're at and sort of our commands that we're working on, and um, and take you along for a look. But first, I need to milk because. Maggie will be patiently waiting for me to milk her. Bruce, the cat, has got into a habit of meeting me at the milk bale every morning because he knows there's a pretty good chance he'll get some fresh milk. All right, so Chili's just going to the toilet, but I do need her to be sitting next to the head bale because Maggie really doesn't like her, um, which is what I want, basically, because I want Chili to be able to move livestock I don't want them to like her and not worry about her you know I want them to listen to Chili so I need to make sure that she's sitting in a place where I can see her so there's no accidents uh, with chasing animals in particular today the cow in the wrong direction because she could run over me the cow could run over me if Chili was pushing the cow towards me so at the moment Chili is not really needed uh, as far as my livestock goes because they're fairly obedient. Chili, come on. Hey. My livestock are fairly obedient. It's we're very small scale and so I don't necessarily need a working dog to be rounding up um, lots of livestock or moving livestock from paddock to paddock because we just don't have the numbers yet. But like I said in the beginning, this is just to train Chili. Um, 
often they say if you have calm livestock that's a good way to train a working dog because um, basically what I'm trying to teach Chili is commands uh, and mostly directional commands so if I have well behaved livestock it's a lot easier for Chili to learn the commands uh, so Chili's just in training I'm not pretending to be <laughs> some sort of big scale farmer uh, this is just purely to to get Chili going so you can see I'm calling the cow up and the cow will walk up. I don't need a livestock dog to be chasing cattle around. Just training chili. Good girl stay. Okay, another little update. I mentioned a little while ago that we would be configuring gates here to keep the cows out of this milking bale. Uh, this here is just to try it out because I don't want to Stay. Good girl, Maggie. Good girl, Maggie. Come on, stay. Good girl, stay. Good girl, stay. Good girl. You're being very patient with me. Stay, good girl. I don't want to make a wrong decision when we're working with concrete or ramming in posts. I don't want to make a wrong decision and have to redo it. So right now we have some just some temporary gates which I'm liking. It's going really well and it's looking like we'll probably settle in this configuration. So it's a smaller gate into the head bale and a larger gate I can open to clean out where the cows are standing. I mentioned before the cows sort of make their own compost with manuring and um, stepping it through hay and the wood chip. So uh, it really mixes well and I like to put that on the garden. So I'll be able to open this really big gate, come in here with a big dingo digger and scoop it all up and put on the veggie garden. Uh, so that's looking like it's going to be how this is gonna be configured. I'm just gonna go and grab some hay and get back to milking Maggie. You wait with Maggie <laughs> and Chili. Chili's right there, she should be sitting down this morning. Chili, come back. Hey. Chili. Okay, I have some notes I'm just going to go and grab from the house because I can't remember all the things I need to tell you about Chili. Sit down. Stay. Stay. So I have 20 commands that I'm currently working on with Chili. Uh, these are just commands I use all the time, uh, but there's four main ones that I'm working on at the moment that I've only just started with Chili. Uh, so these are in no order at all. So side means come, that's what people would use as come. And when I say side, she's to come to my right side um, and sort of touch my hand so I know that she's there. Um, obviously sit, sit down sit is sit um, and I also need to achieve that long distance so even these little subheadings is what I need to achieve in this list sit down in this uh, list the little subheadings is also what I need to achieve so sit um, is sit down next to me obviously but also long distance if she's out in the paddock I need to be able to yell sit and she'll sit down and stop uh, drop drop next to me obviously with a hand command she already does that um, sit down stay but uh, she needs to be able to drop in the paddock too. Ideally, sit if I have it, it's fine, but if she can drop, that would be good as well on the long distance. Um, and then the sweeps that we are currently working on to get direction on our livestock, I've been practicing. Uh, I've applied a few times to the sheep, but mostly we're just practicing these together. And for the left hand sweep, I say go back. Uh, and she will go around the left hand side. We've already practiced that a few times and she's getting quite good at that. Um, and this is a new one for the right hand sweep. I wanna say away to me. So she will swoop around the right hand side to be able to direct the livestock. Obviously stay means stay and don't move. If I tell you to stay, you are to wait until I give you another direction. Uh, it's very important. It's very important she gets these because 
again, it's a safety thing. If she's not switched off and I'm in the head bail and she freaks the cow out, I could get really hurt. So, and she could also get hurt. I've heard a lot of horror stories about um, dogs getting hurt, run over, uh, their stomachs being squished, them dying. So it's very important that everyone is safe. Animals, it can get really unsafe really quick if she's running in the wrong direction or she's not listening. Um, animals can run me over, you know, so I've got to be really careful and be really safe and that to me comes down to making sure she's got her commands rock solid. Um, go to bed, that's a pretty easy one but I want to be able to, if I'm sitting on the deck enjoying a cup of tea and she's right on me, I want to say go to bed and she will go to bed um, all the way around the back of the house into her pen and stay there. Uh, jump up, I do three little whistles like sit down good girl I do three little whistles and she will jump in the direction that I'm pointing that's important for the high jump that I just spoke about uh, I want to be able to make her sit or even drop at the the jumping stand and I want to be able to go up to the jumping stand point and whistle and for her to do it I want the jumping at the show to be a representation of the Kelpie breed I want her to be so perfect that people go wow, that's an amazing dog, that's an amazing breed. I want it to represent the Kelpie. So I want her to be really well trained before we go back next year. Chili is um, coming up on two years old, so she's still only quite young, but if we can practice these things and get them down pat, um, I'm super hopeful for what the future holds for Chili. So, dog high jump for this year. Uh, the highest dog could jump two meters 600 so we are working on confidently getting three meters and practicing three meters if she gets three meters I will be very happy uh, so to do that the kids cubby house has been our platform for now. Uh, the, the jump must be vertical uh, and it's done on like a, like a um, carpet up um, wooden planks. So, but it is straight up and down. There's no assistance whatsoever. Uh, we only went to the show sort of two weeks ago. So this is a very new a thing that we're doing. So we're just starting out on the cubby house and then we're gonna rig something up, make something so that she can practice that three meter high confident jump. Chili. Chili. Good girl. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Good girl. Good girl. Chili. Hey. Good girl. Hey. Hey. Good girl. <laughs> That's about all we've done for now. We will definitely be uh, working on that a bit more. Chili, as far as a Kelpie breed goes, she's quite tall. She's got very long legs, so, and she loves jumping. She absolutely loves it. So I feel like it's good for her uh, to have a bit of competition, something to work towards, something that she can um, be, be proud of herself for. Uh, and hopefully we can maybe get a ribbon next year. Uh, the, drop, drop. The winner this year was actually uh, sort of a Kelpie looking Bitsa um, that was very tall and very light. Uh, in the, I think his name was Nash. And then the second place was actually a big blue healer. And uh, although they look quite tubby, a lot of the blue healers, they can jump. I've seen, that's not the first blue healer I've seen jump. Uh, so that was interesting to see. Second place was a blue healer called Blue. I uh, can't remember. 
third place. I think third place was a Kelpie. Uh, quite a small black Kelpie. Uh, a local Bullock uh, owner owns and he's very well known for his Kelpies. So, uh, and he uses them, they're a working dog. So that was very interesting to, to see. Chili didn't come last but she was no near, nowhere near the top top dogs because she was very, <laughs> she's a little bit distracted and she didn't really know. We'd never done like directional jumping where I stand at a wall basically and tell her to jump up it. We'd never done anything like that. So the actual commands and the actual um, experience was very new to Chili, but I was very impressed to see that she enjoyed it and uh, that she actually went okay. She didn't come last. so. Yeah, but the uh, the mark was two meters six hundred. So we will be practicing three meters um, in the hope that we will place somewhere <laughs> next year. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm just I really hope that uh, she will be super obedient and well trained by then, so that um, I want to leave a lasting impression uh, in people's minds of Kelpies uh, because they are such a beautiful breed that is um yeah super hard working super intelligent and i and i just want to promote that so looking forward to next year and we're going to do plenty of practice in dog high jump let's go i uh, jump down okay so jump up is three whistles good girl sit down <laughs> sit down and down so to jump down from the stand is one low whistle is mat. If I have a mat in the house and for some reason she comes into the house uh, in a break when we're having lunch, I want her to be able to sit on a mat and not move off that mat. And if I move the mat throughout the house, I want her to be able to sit on it um, and for her not to come off that mat. Um, I did train that to um, a previous dog I had and it worked awesome. Uh, the next one is free when I say free in a high-pitched voice she's allowed to run wherever she wants that might be changed eventually to go um, now the go command in the past that I've used with my normal house dogs has been really effective um, especially if they're around kids or kids that are eating and it's sort of like the one when you say to dogs leave it uh, it's sort of the same one so right now it's free in a high-pitched voice Free. Okay. Hey, side. Good girl. Sit down. Sit down. Good girl. Uh, so that might be leave it or go eventually. Uh, another one coming back to the whole side. So side is when I call her to my side. That's like, like come. Side while walking. So when I'm walking and I want her to heal, maybe people would call it heal or be at my side. Uh, I want her to sort of keep eyes on me while she's walking um, at my right side and stay with me. Uh, another one we've just started working on is wait, and that translates to stay in my space. Uh, so if I'm closing a gate and we're around livestock, I want to say wait so she stays by my side loosely uh, so that she doesn't chase after the cows or engage in the livestock when I'm doing something else like closing a gate. Uh, the other one that we've worked on for a long time is to engage in stock and that is a high pitched chill chill which is her name and gets her very excited so that works to help her to engage in stock and bark in a direction and then she is to um, sort of disengage or um, stop when I ask her to so saying chill chill in a high pitched voice means to engage in stock and, and push them um, right now that's only a forward moving push so if she's at my side she moves the, the livestock away from me um, but eventually I want to be able to have that on a direction so if I was to say a left hand sweep go back or a right hand sweep away to me I want her to be able to move the livestock 
uh, with that same command. Uh, so that's where we're at at the moment. And I'm really happy with the way she's going with that. We still are always working on how tight and how crisp the commands are. A few times I will ask her to sit and she will just stand there and ignore me. Uh, unfortunately, that means I have to use my voice more aggressively for her to listen. It doesn't mean I am aggressive towards Chili, but she needs to know that I'm being serious and I put a slight bit of aggression in my voice to make her uh, realize that I'm being serious. Because again, it's a safety thing. If she's not listening, uh, it can be really dangerous. So she must listen every time I say a command. Um, and that's why we haven't engaged too much with livestock because I don't think she's ready yet. She's not, uh, she's not listening as tightly as what I want her to listen. So I'm, I don't know whether that's her age or because we sort of started a bit late together, but we're definitely progressing and we're definitely getting there. So uh, I think I'll know the right time when it's time to work on livestock, but I'm not gonna risk hurting anything livestock dog or me and I'm not going to risk animals being chased out of their paddocks particularly the sheep I don't want them to jump the fence and get out so uh, I will know when it's time to start working livestock I just want to get the basic basics down pat all right let's milk this cow because she's going to get very unhappy <laughs> the thing for me is that the animals, the livestock that I have here are worked calmly. I don't want to rush them with any sort of aggression. So it's important to have those commands down pat so that she's not applying too much pressure to the livestock because in my small amount of experience, in my tiny amount of experience, a calm piece of livestock is a lot better to um, control than an out of control, pressured, uh, crazy animal. So having my commands down pat, I want to be able to apply, apply a small amount of pressure. Like I said, I don't have that much livestock here. I've only got eight, eight sheep and three cows. It's not necessary to have a working dog. It's more for my own experience, for my own learning and training chili uh, that I have nice calm situations where nobody's getting hurt because it's, there's just no need for that uh, all the animals here are pretty well trained to a bucket or a command anyway uh, i just more want to get chili started the main difference between chili and sort of the one thing that i found when getting chili is uh, sort of figuring out the difference between a pet and a family dog and a working dog because they're completely different. When we first started out, I was uh, using food as a reward, but um, I stopped that and now she's just to do things, um, you know, because she's told to do things. I do give her a good pat and give her lots of voice um, reinforcing technique like I give her lots of um, happy voice commands sort of if she's doing the right thing um, but I stopped the food treats so now she's just to do it because if I'm in the paddock chances are I'm not gonna have a dog treat on me so it's important she just listens and does as she's told so that she enjoys doing this um, I don't feel bad about not giving her another reward that maybe a dog handler would give her because I know the reward is in her listening and getting to work the livestock. Come on, I'll eat your brekkie, please. We've got to go. Oh, nice you can't put sauce on the bananas. We'll taste yucky. 
Just banana or jam or salt. No. Right. I'll teach you. Don't be so aggressive. Good job, Anne. That was good. Fine. When I pasteurize the milk, I can then put it straight into the fridge. Ideally, I put it into the freezer to chill, but we currently only have a chest freezer and they don't fit. Uh, if I put it into the fridge, it actually suctions shut. Like you would buy a normal bottle of milk that would be suctioned shut. And so I can come through and take these little clamps off that hold the lid shut without the lid popping off. And then when I come through, I just break that seal a little bit and the milk stays nice and fresh. The Fowler jars, that's this brand of jar that I'm using for my milk. Um, I do have Weck jars, but um, I can't seem to get them to seal properly for some reason. So I have to play around a bit more with them to try and get them to seal. These ones, the rubbers are just different. like. The rubbers sit in this little groove here, like this one. Uh, so you really can't, this goes over the top of the seal, so you really can't break the seal as easy as those wet ones. It sort of goes on top, and if the moisture comes out, it'll just keep breaking the seal. Our breakfast of choice at the moment is fresh, big, juicy tomatoes from the garden that taste like a tomato should with a homemade aioli on toast. With it's, salt! Oh, with plenty of salt. It's really salt. yummy. Yeah, I said. With yeah. salt. Sorry, I'm here. I mean, why don't you do yellow one with yellow? Come on. We're trying to get it. Look at the butter. There's one here. Thank you. Yeah, we wash the tomato cake. I love beautiful. I wash them just in case. Uh, 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 I'm going to cut my fingers, but I'm just going to make it. Go show them the inside of the watch. Watch. Brady wants me to show you the inside of the tomato because it's just meat. It's, cool. it's just a meaty tomato with not many seeds. And it doesn't, it doesn't look normal. No. Like, it's cool. Yeah, but then it doesn't have much. These tomatoes were actually, I'll show you, I'll put in a photo, I bought them from the farmer's market, took the seeds out and I grew them. They looked exactly like this at the farmer's market. So this is... Uh Can I show them the windowsill one? Hi, I'm Rowdy. Um, these are all the tomatoes in the windowsill. Are these ones, these ones are just waiting to be... Like good, aren't they? Yeah. Hey, Mom, those guys might say, Wally, Wally, that's a little tomato. Wally, Wally. 